Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're starting unit 3 of AP Human Geography. This unit is going to be going into different types of religions, cultures, we're going to be looking at diffusion and the cultural landscape and much more. Now for this video we're starting our conversation with unit 3 topic 1. We're going to begin into an introduction to culture. Okay before we get started though what I want you to do is take 10 seconds or if you need a little bit more time you can pause the video. Answer these two questions. Number one, what is culture? And two, what is your culture? All right, time's up. Was it harder to answer than you thought it was going to be? Culture can be really difficult for us to pinpoint, especially when we're talking about our own culture. But we can see that culture can be broken up into two main categories. We have material culture and we also have the non-material culture. Our material culture is items and objects that we give value and have importance to. Things that we're wearing, that we're using, that we purchase. Things that either we or society have put on kind of a pedestal. We see it as more important than other objects. While non-material culture, on the other hand, focuses on our ideas and our beliefs. For example, in your own life, how do you celebrate milestones? How do you celebrate holidays or big life events? What do you do when someone gets a new job or is having a baby or is getting married? These are all non-material culture and some of it is unique to us and our families and others are shared practices with the society we live in. But our culture is so much more than just holidays that we celebrate, things we buy or wear. Here, let me show you. For this next part of the video, what I want you to do is answer the following questions. I'm going to be listing off a bunch of different questions. And what I want you to do is think about where you live. Maybe it's a city, maybe it's a town, but answer the questions for your specific home. This way you can start to see, well, what's the culture of your area? Every single place in the world has unique culture and that shapes us and we shape our environment. The first thing I want you to think about is does your city have public transportation? Is it widely used? If not, how are people getting around your city? What type of buildings are in your city? What type of homes do people have? Is your architecture more modern? Do you have a busy downtown? Are you in an urban location or more of a rural location? How is the land used in your city? How do people in your society interact? Are people interacting more through technology or in person? What languages are spoken? What clothes are in style? What music is popular? What religions are prominent within your society? What people or items are put on display? What food do people eat? How does your society rank and categorize people? What type of government do you have? When do children become adults? What gender roles exist in your society? What is allowed in your city and what isn't allowed? What does your city spend money on? What type of money is used? What does the money even look like? What social norms does your society have? And what jobs are offered in your society? All those questions you just thought about to help actually define the culture that you have for your own society. The culture that is shaped by us. And we, in return, shape the culture. It's hard to pinpoint. We can see that our culture is defined by our shared practices, technology, our attitudes, our beliefs, our architecture, our food. All of this comes together to create a cultural identity. Over time, we see cultures change and evolve. Culture's dynamic after all. It's not stagnant. And sometimes we actually see subcultures form within a larger culture. For example, at your school, you have subcultures. Your school has one cohesive culture that's unique to your school building, but you also have smaller cultures that form, maybe between the different grades within your school or even your friend group. You start to have your own inside jokes, references, and how you guys interact within the larger school community. All of this is referencing to culture. When we understand our culture, we better understand our own identity. Our identity is shaped by our ethnicity, our religion, our race, our language, our sexual orientation, our age, our nationality, and other cultural aspects. All of this helps us better understand exactly who we are and how we fit into the world. Today we can see that culture diffuses around the world. We could look at pop culture or modern culture, which often start in the developed world, but diffuse through hierarchical diffusion. This type of culture is often diverse and changes at a very fast pace as it's constantly being reshaped 
shaped by society. Here, money and the government have a big role, and it's very focused on the individual. Well, we could also look, though, at folk culture, which focuses more on local communities. Here, we see the culture spreads through relocation diffusion. The family and religion are the most important parts of this culture. And a subsec of this culture is actually indigenous culture, where we could see people who have originated at a geographic location and are still practicing their beliefs today. And unfortunately, indigenous culture is rapidly being replaced. As technology becomes more widespread, we start to have modern culture, pop culture, replacing a lot of these traditional cultures. And that's also why we start to see more people become resistant to some of these technological advances. Now, throughout our lives, we're going to see our cultures evolve. They're going to reshape. And we're also going to run into new cultures. Some of these cultures might be very familiar to us, and others might seem very foreign. And it's going to be up to us of how we handle that. Are we going to be practicing ethnocentrism or are we going to be practicing cultural relativism? Cultural relativism is when we look at a culture through their own eyes. We try to see it through their perspective. We don't judge another culture based off our own cultural standards. This allows us to see that culture more objectively and also be able to better understand the people within that culture. Ethnocentrism is when we take our own standards, our own beliefs, our own culture and compare it to a new culture. Instead of trying to understand the culture from their perspective and their eyes, we take our own beliefs and we force it upon them, comparing the two cultures. Essentially what's happening is we're putting our culture on a pedestal and we're looking down on the other culture. And if there's differences, then we're judging them based on our own standards. We're not trying to see that culture through their perspective. And unfortunately, this can lead to xenophobia, prejudice, racism, and misunderstanding because we're not taking the time to look at that culture objectively. So today we looked at what culture is, how it defines us and society, how different elements make up culture. We talked about material culture and non-material culture. We also looked at folk culture, pop culture, and indigenous culture. Plus, we got into subcultures and ethnocentrism and also cultural relativism. And if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing. It helps support the channel and will allow me to make more videos. Now, what you need to do now is answer those quiz questions that have been on the screen. Once you're done with that, check your answers in the comments below. And if you need some more help in AP Human Geography, check out my Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, that's all the time we have for today, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.